due to the current state of video game development at the hands of current affairs, will there inevitably be a delay to Halo Infinite? Let's talk about it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What is up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Great to be back after a week-long hiatus. Had to handle some things behind the scenes, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. We'll talk a little bit about it later. You know what I'm saying? With that said, welcome to this episode of The Medicine. Do me a huge favor, y'all. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy is dropping these doses on the medicine i appreciate all y'all straight up y'all know the slogan y'all know the deal i am not too proud to ask let's get into it all right so here's the deal people uh last of us 2 got delayed right wasteland 3 got delayed right on the xbox side and now the talk is around halo infinite now i get it we got the fanboys on the ethos talking about ah ha Last of Us 2 got delayed, aha. Uh -huh. And you're not, if, if PlayStation would've had a Game Pass, two games wouldn't be delayed. <laughs> Hold on, give me a second, Hold on. The, game, the games would be delayed. <laughs> oh man, uh, excuse me. Yeah, if, 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 if PlayStation had a Game Pass, two games wouldn't be delayed, right? But uh, with that being said, I completely understand where they're coming from for a business perspective. Um, you're not going to leave any money on the ground. Okay. Um, you're not, you can't assume anything that people would forego their physical copies and go with digital, you know, um, as the homie Porter rock said, you know, Sony's going to go all out with this. They going to paint plane trains and automobiles with this one. And there has to be a full release. They don't want to leave a dollar. They don't want to leave a dollar on the table. People may say, you know what? That's foul of Sony, but you know, because people are stuck in the home, just release it digitally. No, this is a business, baby. You got people already spewing money because of what's going on with, uh, you know, things in, in, in world affairs. They're, they're not going to, you know, stifle even more money. It's just not happening. Okay. And with that being said, your favorite company, the company that you may feel may be more consumer friendly. They, they got, they got to deal with the same paradox. They got to deal with the same issue. They're already bleeding money, hemorrhaging money because they can't produce things and things are, may not be happening at will uh, or at the normal pace due to world affairs, right? So now they got to look at the release of, I want to say the most important game of Xbox in the Phil Spencer tenure, at least, if not ever. I mean, this game is gonna lay down the foundation to see the worthiness of the Xbox ecosystem off the bat. Depending upon how well this game does, will I think lay a very well, a likely a very well foundation on what type of trajectory the platform is gonna be in, at least for the earlier years of this generation, right? Um, and I know a lot of Xbox fans may not see it that way, but y'all don't see nothing any way outside of your silos. You know what I'm saying? You you think purely based off of what your likes are and you can't connect to the average gamer. It's, it just is what it is. And I mean, you can wear it with a badge of honor or whatever the case may be, but you gotta be self-aware. If you thought like the average gamer, then you wouldn't have an Xbox in your home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing that you have an Xbox, but I'm that's just, that's just it right there. If you thought like the average gamer, then you wouldn't be capping for Xbox or have an Xbox in your home. You don't think like the average gamer. People can take that as a positive. I take it as a positive that I think differently from my own personal likes, but it is what it is. That being said, I'm saying all that to say this. Don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Halo's gonna be delayed. I'm even gonna take it a step further. Don't take it out of the realm of possibility that these consoles are gonna be delayed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I get it. China's ramping up production, but there's a lot of murmurs behind the scenes about, are they doing this too fast? If another outbreak happens, and I don't care if stuff is already shipped out and sitting at warehouses, that stuff ain't moving, all right? It's gonna be sent back, sitting in the warehouse, might be set on fire, okay? You get what I'm saying? So, if you wanna look at the big picture, if you wanna look at things from 5,000 feet, then I wouldn't 
you know, I wouldn't be so quick to laugh at The Last of Us 2 being held back. Because here's the thing. I originally didn't understand the timing of PlayStation's releases this year. I mean, it was great for discussing points while they didn't talk about the PlayStation 5. But I think in the long term, it would have been better to have their heavy hitters release around the same time with the PlayStation 5. So here's the thing, y'all. If the PlayStation 5 games are being held back, or at least one of them is being held back to the end of the year, and Halo Infinite ain't launching till 2021, and Microsoft doesn't have any like exclusive second party games that make the box sing at launch, hmm, you fill in the blanks. You know what I'm saying? So very interesting, very interesting indeed. And I think what Microsoft can do, cause this ain't gonna be an RIP Xbox, this is not an RIP Xbox video. I'm just basically telling everybody to think more well-roundedly, okay? This is not in the bag as many people try to make it out to be. Like, don't fall for that same Xbox uh, Scorpio slash uh, Xbox One X trap. Don't, don't go down the same rabbit hole, y'all. But what Xbox can do to alleviate such a gap is what I've been proclaiming on Scram Punks, on every video that I've been doing for the last several months, show the games. I don't care if it's a steal, uh, picture or concept art, show them. Throw that three-year mantra out the window. Show them. I don't care if this thing is coming in 2025, show them. For whatever you don't have to put in people's hands tangibly, you gotta break out of the norm and you gotta start showing stuff. I don't care how long away it is. Especially if you gotta delay Halo Infinite and then you do run into the scenario where The Last of Us 2 happens to be releasing with the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4 at the same time. That's gonna be a big boost for the PlayStation 5. You know what I'm saying? And with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always say, here's what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below. Follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with that being said, hey, look, guys, um, we don't know where this thing is going to shake. A lot of things could be delayed. Everything could be delayed. But I'm just saying, to help fill that gap, my Xbox brethren, assure Phil, let him know, don't just believe it, the words, assure Phil that you want to see concept or you want to see everything because what you need is the mind share from the casual gamers to bring them back. They already got you. So it's beyond, it's going beyond what's going to just make you happy. They got, you're not going anywhere. So if they do stuff like that, trust me, that'll capture the eye of the casual gamer. But that's it. You all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.